I guess just in the spirit of being real, I wanted to like document this and show you guys my thought process when things are not flowing as well as I would like them to be. Four, six, eight, one hundred. So that is my cash budget for the month of March. Can you guys tell I'm like a little bit flustered? Welcome, welcome everyone to your healthy and wealthy girl reset for the month of March. I feel a little bit silly saying that because I know I'm late. I know, okay, and. I think this year, I think 2024 is actually needs to be the year of me embracing the fact that I'm never really on time. I'm always running like a few steps behind. I feel like I say this in all my videos, but like as much as I want to be that girl and that YouTuber who's like ahead of schedule and like uploads the reset on the first, like I'm just, I'm just not that girl. Okay. I'm doing my reset here on what are we? Today's the fifth. And yes, as much as I want to be like that girl. I feel like something that I'm kind of just like wanting to embrace in 2024 is one, being your own version of that girl, like being yourself and realizing that as much fun as it can be to focus on wellness and do these monthly resets and buy a cute new outfit and drink a green juice and go to a workout class. I love all of those things. You're also allowed to just be satisfied and be happy with exactly who you are and not constantly be wanting to change things about yourself. I feel like I used to want to do a lot of these things to better myself, always be bettering myself. And while on one hand, yes, I think we should always be striving to improve, it doesn't need to come from a place of you not being good enough because you already are good enough. I don't know, that's just something that I've been thinking about a lot recently. I really want this monthly reset to come from the heart. Not that the last ones didn't, I'm just in a little bit more of a chaotic place where I've been like thinking a lot. There's a lot of change going on in my physical space. And so I think all of that's just kind of bouncing back on me emotionally where I'm really trying to keep my cool in this period of change while also just being gentle on myself. So we're gonna do some gentle productivity in this reset, but we're also gonna be like super productive because I have big goals for the month of March and it's super exciting. So I just made a cup of Bengal spice tea. I'm sitting here on my floor. I wanted to make a little intro to this reset because I want us to spend the entire day from like sunrise to sundown tomorrow resetting. So I thought it'd be a good idea for me to just set the stage today. You see? <laughs> I got back last night from Florida at like two in the morning. So I spent the day today just like kind of unpacking and trying to get my shit together and trying to work a little bit. And then tomorrow is really gonna be go time. So I feel like I have my general outline set up for the month of March, for what I wanna focus on, for what I want my goals to be. And I thought about this a lot while I was on vacation and you guys know like the plane ride, you're like staring out the window, like thinking about your life. And I figured I wanna focus on three major buckets this month. The first bucket is work because a girl's gotta work. I also just feel like maybe with like this spring energy, the nicer weather, I'm really in like a working mood. Like I wanna make videos, I wanna do my copywriting, I want to work hard. <laughs> I wanna focus on my finances, I wanna take care of that, just like work side of me, the like numbers and the, I don't know what you would call that side, the, the business side of me, you know? The second bucket is health and fitness. I feel like in February, I made some really great strides with my fitness. And also I've been on this like mini digestion, understanding my digestion journey. And I've also made some big strides there. So I just like, I'm feeling really good physically and I wanna keep going with that. And then the third bucket is happiness, which is definitely the most important. I think that the first two are very like go and do and work out and work. So I wanted to have the third bucket to just be, yes, doing both of those things while, while also maintaining a sense of balance and more than everything, focusing on my happiness. So I'm gonna work hard and I'm gonna work on my health and fitness while really, really focusing on my happiness and keeping that as kind of like my underlying motivator. So all that's good and gorgeous, but we need a way to track it, right? I sat down at my desk, my new desk, which I'm gonna show you guys everything tomorrow. My apartment is just 
in a state of utter chaos because I've officially moved out of my office. Um, after this video, you guys will see the Sunday chat explaining all of that. So sat down in my new little office space here in the apartment and I wrote out a bunch of my goals and a bunch of my like checklists and to do's for the month of March in my fabulous Press Reset goal and habit tracker. I wanna thank Press Reset for sponsoring this video. I know some of you guys have gotten this habit tracker as well. I hope you're loving it as much as I am because seriously, this tab just stays open on my computer and, and I just love it. So what you guys can see on the screen right now is the first look at my annual dashboard. I set a bunch of goals for the whole year of 2024 and I love that I have this tab that I can come back and refer to. You guys know me and you know I like to do one version of things digitally and another version on paper. I just find it helps keep me organized and keep me accountable. You can see on the screen, we don't have that much progress towards the annual goals yet, but I know we will get there. Actually, I get to check off this one here, Train Maggie month two, because we finished February. So speaking of February, let's go in and do a quick reflection of last month. You guys can see here the tracker divides it up between personal goals, wellness goals, financial and career. There's also a section here for spiritual goals, which I didn't fill out in February. I didn't set that many goals at the beginning of February because I was feeling in a really like kind of soft mood, a lot more chill, which is fine. I think nothing wrong with that. I got three out of four of my personal goals done none of my wellness goals <laughs> okay i mean i did take some long walks but definitely it wasn't daily my meditation was like n just no i think i did it like once in the month as for my financial goals i haven't sat down and done my personal finance recap yet we're actually going to do it in this video tomorrow and then my career goals i got three out of five done still we're not even going to talk about those we're not even going to talk about those but regarding the spreadsheet i love how every single month you have a space to come in set your goals check them off as you go and reflect at the end of the month if we go down it actually makes a nice graph for us so we can see how our goals measure up in terms of goals that we set and goals that we've achieved so you can see like i'm pretty good with my personal goals not very good with my wellness goals. The good news is I got all of my monthly to-dos done, which feels great. Just those little things that we can often put off. You guys might remember with the whole washing my car ordeal. I did pretty good with my habit tracker in terms of filling it out. I made it to about the halfway point of the month and then I went on vacation and I just completely forgot to keep up with my habit tracker. So that's on me. I think the thing I'm most proud of in February, actually there's two things. One is how consistently I worked out in the month of February. It just felt so good. Like I felt, I feel like I felt my body like coming alive after like a rough winter. I don't know. Just kind of fell back in love with spinning and waking up early and going for those morning workouts. And that's actually something I'm excited to be home and get back into, which we will start tomorrow, start back that good habit. The second thing that I'm super, super proud of is Maggie's training. Now, there aren't that many check marks here. I didn't get around to doing it every day, but in the times that I did it, we made such amazing progress. So I'm just really keeping that positive mindset. At the bottom, we have a section here for monthly reflection. I feel like overall, I just felt really good in the month of February, and I'm really, really happy for that. And to conclude with February's reflection, three things that I'm grateful that happened this month are an amazing time in Florida, moving out of the office was really really quick and painless and then the amazing progress for maggie's training so i really love with this spreadsheet is how you can spend a little bit of time at the beginning of the month a little bit of time throughout and a little bit of time at the end it does not take a lot of time to set all of this up because in terms of all the aesthetic stuff press reset has done all the work you don't have to spend any time making this spreadsheet look good which when it comes to like digital trackers that's always been a barrier for me is i end up spending more time making it look good and keeping up with the software than actually using it to set my goals and achieve my goals all you need to do is type all you need to do is fill in the blanks here and type it's so quick and easy. So now let's take a look at March. I'm not gonna go through each of these line by line. If you're curious, you can pause and read, but we are going to go through a lot of these things tomorrow in the like vlog portion of this reset, but really everything falls under those three main buckets. I've got a really nice monthly to-do section that is all about the home. It's really, really all about the home. My habit tracker here, all the same habits as last month that I wanna be checking. Of course, I missed the first couple of days because I was in Florida and not paying attention to my habits. But now that we're here, we're gonna get back into it. And then down here for the first week of March, 
I've got a checklist and most of this checklist, everything you see in this top half here, I wanna focus on with you guys tomorrow in the reset. And then the other things can get done later this week. They're not as pressing. So that's kind of what's in store for the month and then what's also in store for the rest of this video. You guys, I highly recommend checking out this tracker from Press Reset. The way the spreadsheet works is it's a Google spreadsheet. So you do it right from the internet. You don't need to download any software or anything like that. And you do not need to wait until January 1st to start. You don't even need to wait from March 1st, okay? March 1st is gone. You can download it right away in the middle of the month. And because of the way the tracker is designed, you can keep reusing the same tracker for years and years and years. It's like a one-time purchase, super affordable. Plus, I have a discount code for you guys. I will put it on the screen. Thank you so much to Press Reset for sponsoring this video. And you guys, I will see you tomorrow. We're gonna spend the whole day together, getting our life together, resetting. Three, two, one, let's do it. Good morning guys. I just got out of spin class. It was so hard. I also just had the hardest time getting up this morning. My alarm went off at like a little bit before six and I was just like, nope. And I pressed the like, I didn't even press the snooze button. I really self-sabotaged and I fully, if you press and hold on the hatch, it like turns off the alarm. So I turned off the alarm and went back to bed. <laughs> I was literally like, if I wake up and make it to spin class, then I wake up and make it to spin class. And if I don't, I'll pay the cancellation fee. Like I was so tired. I was kind of sleeping when like, you know, you're asleep, but like, you know, you need to get up. Like I think in my heart, I, I really did want to go. Um, but I was taking my sweet time. I stayed like way too long in bed. And then JS came home from his run and was like, go, 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 get up. So I like threw my workout clothes on. Luckily I had put them out on the couch last night so i was able to just throw everything on throw on my coat and go and i made it right on time and i'm so glad that i did because it really just it kind of like put me in the mood of like okay i'm home back to my routine and the thing with these early morning workouts is before you go in you're like why did i do this and then as soon as you come out you're like i rule the world so i'm riding that high right now i'm so actually excited for today it's a really like gloomy rainy day which is great for productivity because it means we can just get everything we need to get done we're gonna be cozy inside we have a really big list today but i'm feeling excited rather than overwhelmed so i better stop talking i'm gonna shut up <laughs> let's go home and have breakfast and we'll get this day started Okay, so I'm ready for the day. I just showered. I slicked my hair with some amazing hair savior. I put on the Summer Fridays jet lag mask on my face and then just did my eyebrows. I'm really trying to go no makeup for the next few days. The past like month, not even month, the past like few months, my skin has been acting crazy and it's been getting worse and worse and worse. And then when I was in Florida and I stopped wearing makeup, it started getting better. So I'm just like, I'm gonna stay away from makeup for a little bit. Usually just concealer is fine, but I feel like anytime I put something else on my face, I don't know, my skin like reacts. So I'm just trying to take it easy. And then for my outfit today, because it's so rainy, I just wanted to be like cute and comfortable, but I also wanted to feel like a touch put together so that we can, you know, be productive. So I wanted to wear this sweater from Cezanne. I just love it. It just feels like polished. And then instead of going with like a classic black legging, I decided to do brown to just play with like the brown tones of the sweater. And then I did a brown tank top underneath. And I really, really like how this outfit turned out. It makes me feel a little bit like off-duty dancer, the way that the sweater kind of falls off the shoulder. So I'm ready for the day. Now, the other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is 
the mess that is my apartment right now. Basically, right before going to Florida, we had to move all of the stuff or everything that I was keeping from my office into this apartment. So that's why there's like a desk right here because we have two desks. The standing desk is over there. We just got a new chair delivered, which I'm gonna set up next week. There's just like a lot of stuff right now in the apartment that doesn't have its place. And it's taking everything in me to actually like want to sit down and work and it was the same thing yesterday rather than organize and clean i feel like i definitely use cleaning as like a procrastination tactic so we're just going to ignore the mess today like it's actually not even cleaning it's tidying because we cleaned last night like wash the floors vacuum that kind of thing so it's really like tidying and we're just going to ignore it so if you guys see like crap in the background if things are not looking aesthetic just bear with me, this is my real life right now. This is the state of the desk, like this is bad. And this actually is like not even conducive to working. So I am gonna have to tidy this up quickly before we get started. So step one is going to be to tidy up the space. And then step two is going to be to take the to-do list that I made yesterday in my press reset planner, rewrite it in my gentle productivity planner and then prioritize so I know what I'm gonna start with today but we need a little cozy drink to get us started. So I'm gonna make this matcha. I bought this kit months ago and then literally forgot that I bought it because I brought it over to the office and forgot about it. This is like a just add water matcha latte kit. It's made with oat milk powder and then matcha of course. So it said to add just a little bit of water to make a paste and then you slowly add more water. Not a vibe. Okay, I, <laughs> this is so sad. It doesn't even taste that good, but I'm scared to add any more powder because I feel like it's not gonna, dissolve and then i added some oat milk or almond milk to cool it down and there's like chunks like anyways the day can only go up from here the last step before we really really get into this is i'm just going to take my supplements omega-3 probiotic and multivitamin i was thinking about this last night and i wanted to share these thoughts with you guys um i was looking around at the apartment last night and even though it's messy and even though it's cluttered and it's a little bit cramped i just I feel like when I come home from a trip, I just get this sense of gratitude for like where I live um, in this apartment and like, just like living with JS, I don't know. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit sappy, but I, I always do like, sometimes I feel sad to come home from a trip because it's like, you've had such a good time, but then you come home and I like look around at my physical space and I just feel like, oh, I'm so lucky to live here. I went through a phase a couple months ago where I had this like craving for a house and I was really like, this apartment's too small, it's too cramped, like I wanna live in a house, I wanna like, just straight up, I can't afford to have a house, I can't afford a house period right now, but like I can't afford to have a house in the city, so it was like, I'm ready to move to the suburbs, like I want space, I want, you know, a home office, I want a blah, 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 like I want, I want, I want. And I was reflecting last night, I was looking at the new desk and like, yeah, it's really cluttered, but I actually kind of like how it looks and like, it's okay that your desk is in your living room. It's okay that you watch TV and want to do a home workout and have your desk and work all in the same room. Like you don't, I just was like, I don't need to rush into having a house. Like I'm sure one day I'm going to have a house and one day I'm going to have a big house full of, full of rooms and full of people and whatever, but I don't need to rush towards that time in my life. And honestly, I just need to, and should be really grateful to live in this beautiful apartment. Like it's a beautiful apartment. There's big windows. I live in a great part of Montreal. Like I love my neighborhood. It just made me think of what I was saying in yesterday's clips of like not needing to change something all the time and not needing to improve or grow all the time. Like you can just be happy in your home and maybe it's a little bit small, but that's okay. I guess like I'm so used to always trying to like fix something and better something. And once again, that's okay because I like being that like productive person but when you get too focused on the productivity and too focused on the growth that you're not even grateful for what's around you, then you have a problem. So I was happy last night going to bed and I was just like, yeah, I'm grateful. Like everything's good. We're gonna tidy it up. We're gonna clean it up. We're gonna make everything look great. And I'm gonna be happy with my desk and the living room and I'm gonna get myself out of the house and it's all 
good. So supplements taken, matcha made. It's really not that good. I wish, I wish it was better. Anywho, let's tidy up my desk and get into this reset. It's been like 15 minutes of, of reset video and like we're not into the reset yet. <laughs> on the dirty clothes you so cute are you happy to be back with your parents why when they sleep are they such angels and also why does she feel the need to sleep on my dirty clothes she does the same with js like when he goes in the shower if, especially if it's after a workout she goes right on top and like makes a bed out of the sweaty gym clothes it's crazy funny funny dogs eh funny dogs so welcome to my desk. I think this is the first time that I film in my new home office, which is pretty exciting. I just wrote down everything that was on the to-do list that I made yesterday into my agenda. I find when it's on paper, it makes it a little bit easier for me day of to just kind of move things around, put little stars next to things, assign priority, etc. And I'm someone who loves like checking things off. So having it to check off on paper and also on the digital just makes me really happy. Twice the satisfaction. Now a bad habit of mine is overestimating how much I can do in one day. Like I'll write a massive to-do list and be like, yep, you could do it all. And then 3 p.m. rolls around and I get hit with major anxiety. So I wanna avoid that today. I want to start with the thing that I'm kind of dreading the most and that feels like the biggest task on my plate right now, which is doing a check-in on my finances. I have been on vacation for the past almost two weeks. I, it's a new month and I haven't set up my budget yet. Like I'm just really not on track when it comes to my finances. So I need to take a look at last month's finances. I need to input everything that I spent on vacation because I did not, I did not like, so that I didn't think about finances on vacation, but I didn't, you guys know, like I do my cash envelopes, I'm usually tracking stuff, didn't do any of that on vacation. So I need to go back, look at my credit card statements and put everything into my budget tracker. And then I need to make the cash budget for the month of March. It was really tempting to just not do cash envelopes this month. I don't know why there was just part of me that was like, maybe let's like see how it goes without, but I know how it's gonna go without and it's not gonna go well. So no, I'm gonna be strict with myself, stick to the cash budget. We're gonna make that today. So first things first, I wanna just close up last month and then we will build my budget together for the month of March. So I'm gonna turn you guys off because I don't want you to see my credit card statements. Okay, so I'm in the midst of doing my budgeting and I've hit a little hiccup slash stressful moment. And I guess just in the spirit of being real, I wanted to like document this and show you guys my thought process when things are not flowing as well as I would like them to be. It's been a while since I've been in this situation and for that I'm very grateful. But first, the other thing I'm grateful for is actually that I'm staying like very level-headed right now. I'm not getting emotional. I'm not freaking out. I'm just like, I'm gonna break things down. I've got my notebook and I'm going to like kind of journal as I go or just write out a list as I go of the steps that need to get done so that I can allocate my budget accordingly. Basically what happened is there was a delay. I don't know why, but there was a delay with one, my, my copywriting invoice. So you guys know I work as a freelance copywriter. It is not my biggest bucket of income, but it's definitely a nice, you know, paycheck that really makes a difference is basically that paycheck every month that allows me to get one month ahead. It usually tallies up to pretty much, no, it's a little bit less than, it's always a bit less than $2,000, which let's say a little bit under 2,000 is the amount that I need to pay my rent and fill up my cash budget. I've never had an issue with getting paid from them. I think they might've done some changes in like their accounting department or something because last month there was an issue, although I did get paid 
like within the correct month. This month, um, haven't gotten paid. I've sent my follow-ups, haven't heard back. So <laughs> I know everything's gonna work out, but this is just like a reality of being a freelancer is sometimes these things go wrong. Corporations take a long time to pay you. And it's the same thing oftentimes with sponsored videos where sometimes you do a sponsored video in January and you don't get paid until March. So all that to say, cash flow wise, there's not a lot working in my bank account. Now, I have to be really grateful that I don't have office rent to pay this month because it's one less expense. However, I do still have the insurance that I need to pay because of the contract on my insurance. So I'm paying insurance for nothing, but that's another story. So I'm gonna just write down the insurance actually because I had completely forgot about it. So with the money I have, I need to first pay myself. And what I'm including in paying myself is being able to pay my rent because I did not get one month ahead because I'm missing this paycheck. And I need to take out about $1,000, probably a little bit less um, for my cash budget this month. So step one is to pay myself. So I need $1,875 to do so. So I'm going to go into, I keep all of my, every time I get paid, I keep all of that money unless I've already assigned it to the one month ahead account, I will keep all of that money in a second checking account. So I'm gonna take from that second checking account, I'm gonna take that 1,875 that I need. I like to go step by step like this so that I can see exactly what the balance is and just make decisions like one step at a time rather than feeling overwhelmed. So that's done, we're good. Like the basics, paying rent. I mean, look, <laughs> if I really couldn't pay rent, I'm sure JS would spot me, but I like to uphold my end of the bargain. And then of course my cash envelopes, like we talked about, um, it's important. Now step two, this is where some people are going to disagree with me. A lot of people say to pay yourself and pay your savings before you pay off your bills and your credit cards. Um, that's all lovely. However, I don't want to incur credit card debt. So my step two is going to be to pay my credit cards. It's just really, really important for me to always stay on top of paying the full balance of my credit cards because I do not want to incur 20% interest. I just know. So on my credit cards, my MasterCard is like the lowest it's ever been. It's $125. And then my American Express, which is all of my spending basically leading up to vacations. So vacation spending is not included in this number, it was $1,231. So I'm going to make those payments now. I'm gonna take that from, again, that second checking account. I need $1,356. Okay, that's done. And then I'm gonna go in and pay my MasterCard. And then 1231 to the American Express. Okay, so the credit cards are done. That always feels really good. Step three. Step three is to look at my goals and see what I'm able to accomplish. When I moved into the office last year, I started a bit of a protocol for myself to keep a certain amount, just a little over $2,000 in my kind of like YouTube account so that I was three months ahead for my office rent. I also considered that just a little bit of a safety net for any YouTube expenses that could pop up if there was something that I needed to buy urgently. Like for example, there was one time I left my computer charger in Granby, had to go buy another computer charger. They're not cheap. So it was like I had a little bit of a buffer. Well, I had a lot of a buffer in the case of the computer charger, but you know what I mean? Can you guys tell I'm like a little bit flustered? It's been a while since I felt this way about money. Anywho, now I need to decide if I want to keep that buffer, seeing as I don't have an office rent to worry about, or if I wanna be able to put that towards my savings goal, especially my savings goal for my RRSP of hitting $1,000. I think I'm going to hit my savings goal. It feels weird to not have a little bit of a buffer, but I think it's okay. If anything were to seriously go wrong, I do have my emergency fund that I can dip into. And I just think for myself, it's important to keep that momentum of moving towards my goal because I set the goal of $20,000 this year. If I don't contribute my thousand, then I'm a thousand behind next month. And I just think it could kind of pile up. So, Everything's okay. Like, yes, I felt a bit flustered. 
everything's okay. I'm so grateful that I am still, despite that missing payment in a position where I can pay all of my bills and everything like that. I'm very, very grateful for that. And to be able to hit my savings goal feels really good. So taking a little bit from my buffer money, but that's okay. That's what I've decided to do. And you guys just saw kind of how I walk through my thinking um, when it comes to my budget. So step three is going to be RRSP, $1,000. So I'll do that in a minute because I need to do it from my phone. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is I just feel like I haven't been making the greatest strides towards my personal finance goals. There's like a bunch of little funds that I wanted to create. And to be honest with you guys, like I haven't even thought about them. And I feel like I don't know why that is, honestly. Like I, I, I don't have a reason or an excuse why. I do think April, like I have April in my mind as like, okay, no more vacations like whatever like april we're gonna get serious like springtime and april i really want to start that 100k like kickoff and really think about my finance my finance goals <laughs> think about my finance goals and those little funds um and really really make strides to do them so that's also i think why maybe it's important for me to work really hard in march even though i might not get all of the paychecks in the month of march to be able to do it in april just starting to get serious about my finances. Not that I'm like not serious about them, but just moving forward because I've learned from, from my experience with budgeting and stuff, it's one thing to care about your finances, it's one thing to track your spending, and I think that's a really good start, but if you have big goals and you have audacious goals, you have to actively work towards them. They're not just gonna like automatically come true by, by themselves, at least not for me. <laughs> So now I get to check off the finances check-in in my agenda. And I also get to go check it off in my habit tracker. So one thing done, what time is it? It's almost 11 a.m. So we're doing pretty good. Now I wanna take a break from staring at my computer screen and I actually want to do just a little bit of journaling and reflecting on those three buckets that we talked about yesterday. This is gonna be like the longest reset vlog ever. So I hope you've got a snack or something or some laundry to fold or something to keep you entertained, but hope you're enjoying so far. listening to Lana Del Rey all morning and it's just setting like the best cozy vibes. So I just filled out the journal page of my gentle productivity planner. I can't believe it. I think there's only like one or two months left in here. It's crazy. My three themes for the month are of course work, health and fitness and happiness, which I guess could be four, but health and fitness are just going together. I had a hard time coming up with my affirmations. I had to really like close my eyes and kind of think about them. And I did them at the very end, but these are the three that I came up with. The first is I am at peace. I am perfect as I am and everything flows to me. I feel like in March, I really just wanna focus on moving forward with just kind of everything that I have, not needing to change anything, not needing to be like overly striving towards everything, just being like really, really happy and content with what I have and, and continuing to move forward like that. So in the reflections portion, I just wrote down a little bit more about what each of the three themes means to me. I feel like we talked a bit about work yesterday, so I'll skip over that one. Health and fitness, again, is the digestion. So weird, you guys. I feel like I finally put my finger on some of the things that have been upsetting my stomach for years. And two of those things are onions and garlic. It seems like when I eat onions and garlic, I just get really bloated, really uncomfortable, like cannot digest them. So I've been kind of actively cutting them out. Like when I made dinner last night, I did chives instead of onions and garlic. No bloating, no stomach issues, tasted great. Like I'm, I'm shook. I'm shook that those are, could be the culprits. 
working on my running. I did quite a bit of running in Florida and it felt really good to get the ball rolling on that. Plus that works towards my big goal of running a 10K in the fall. Keep going with spin like this morning, a bar of course, cooking, which to me cooking doesn't always have to be like cooking healthy things. I feel like just cooking at home is already healthier than eating out. So I'm not too strict about like what I cook and like it needs to be so healthy. And then of course, drinking water. And then when it comes to happiness, these are the things that I wrote down that really truly make me happy. Aside from like spending time with friends and loved ones, hanging out with Maggie, the things that I can do alone that make me really happy are reading, taking bubble baths, and just kind of like, that's how I show myself self-love and self-care. I really want to read more this month. I, I want to feel like I learned a lot from my no TV January and then I did watch quite a bit of TV in February and I actually am so much happier when I'm not watching TV. That being said, when there's like a moment, like I've been loving watching Love is Blind. Normally I watch with my friend Camilla, but I've been watching alone this time and I just, I love having something to kind of hook on to, but mindlessly watching TV like the way that I will mindlessly watch Gossip Girl or Gilmore Girls or Sex in the City. I don't need I don't need to be doing that. Like stay away from TV and have more time to read. I'm currently reading El Paso. It's so good. It's a really thick book with tiny tiny font. Um so I want to finish that this month if I can get through it I will be pretty happy. But yeah, really really enjoying this book. I do recommend it. I'm also halfway through this book, We Should All Be Millionaires. It is so good. I think I can definitely finish the second half of it in March. And then lined up for my next read is this book called Book Lovers by Emily Henry. My friend Michaela gave me this and she really enjoyed it. I feel like it'll just be something light because El Paso is not an easy read. And then this, I would say is an easy read, but it definitely makes you think a lot. Like I was reading this on the beach and I was like, <sighs> like thinking, thinking, gotta email this person, like <laughs> the patriarchy, you know? So I just want like a nice, easy read afterwards. All right, we are going to get back to like hardcore work at the desk because I have a lot to do. But one of the things on my to-do list was to make my homemade granola. It doesn't take very long, but I've kind of been putting it off. So I'm like, just turn on the oven, start making the granola, and then we're gonna pop a Celsius and get to work. So this is just kind of a made up recipe that I took like pieces from different granola recipes. It's really not a science. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys could like take a screenshot this recipe. Um, you preheat the oven to 265 Fahrenheit. It takes a while to bake, but the actual preparation process is pretty quick and easy. It's just your oats. And then whatever embellishments you want to put on. So you can do cacao nibs. I like to do a little bit of almonds, have some walnuts here. And I bought some raisins specifically for the granola. So you just lay everything out on a baking sheet. You bake it for 15 to 20 minutes, then you stir it up and bake it for another 15. Look how good it looks. And then after you just kind of like crunch it up, but I will show you guys. I just love making it at home because store-bought granola is literally full of sugar. And I do sweeten this with maple syrup, but it's like a little bit better than cane sugar or whatever. Plus making it at home is just so much more affordable. Like granola is so expensive and you're paying for like sugar and oats when you read the ingredients. So no thank you, try out this granola if you enjoy granola like over fruits or over yogurt, it's so good. And like I said, you can customize all of the ingredients and really make it your own. I'm actually gonna save the Celsius for later because I haven't eaten lunch yet. I don't want the Celsius to like suppress my appetite and then I skip lunch and then I get anxiety, no thank you. So I'm gonna just drink water for now while I go work. I'm going to enhance my water. I'm trying to do this once a day with some chlorophyll. I bought this at the spa 
my mom and I went to the spa in Gatineau when I was last in Ottawa and they put this in their water and it has like a minty taste. It's so good. So I bought this little bottle. You just add a few drops. Look how cool. It's like, it looks like sinister poison. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh shoot, I might've just put too much. And then just stir it up and then see, it turns green. I just feel like it kind of motivates me to drink a little bit more water, makes it a bit more fun. So if we go back to my checklist for the day, the finance check-in is done and I've made the granola. I'm going to check off the granola on my habit tracker. And now you guys, I'm going to get to work editing Florida vlog number two because I really want it to go up quickly. So I'm gonna do that for a little bit until I get hungry basically. And I will see you guys when it's lunch break time. This is what I made for lunch. Just a really, really simple salad with a piece of baked fish on top. It looks so good and it was so easy to make. So you guys, I have completely crashed. I cracked open that Celsius and then just sat down on the couch to make my budget. And I felt like I could genuinely just like fall asleep and wake up tomorrow. I don't, I don't know what hit me. I doubt that it's my lunch that's making me crash because like it's just salad. <laughs> so I'm gonna drink that Celsius, but I'm not like, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of, I'm feeling exhausted. But I'm forcing myself to stay true to my word and go out for lunch, take Maggie out. I had put on my goals list that I wanted to take her to the off-leash dog park, but given that it's raining, she will just be way too muddy when we come back. And I don't feel like having to give her a big scrub down. So instead, instead of driving to the park and then going to the bank on the way home, I'm just gonna do a walk to the bank. It's a pretty long walk, but I think it'll be good for me just to like get out of the house. Something that I've been really bad at literally since COVID, since I started <laughs> tying my shoe, since I started working from home is taking a lunch break. I just would always work through lunch. And maybe that's why I'm feeling tired is because I waited too long to take a break. Like it's two o'clock now because I ate later because I wasn't hungry, but I would just never actually give myself a break and just like power through the entire day. It was a little bit better going to my office because I would walk to my office, I would walk home. So even if I didn't take a lunch break, I still had that feeling of like, just not being shut in my house all day. So I know that now that I don't have an office anymore, I need to be careful because genuinely it's really easy to get depressed when you're just, once again, shut in your house all day. So even though I don't feel like it, I'm gonna make an effort to go do this long walk. Plus there's like an end goal of going to the bank. It's not too cold today, but I did layer up. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I'm wearing like my very tactical jacket underneath this. This is for cuteness and this is for warmth plus that it's raining, I can put the hood on. I forgot my AirPods in Florida, so <laughs> I'm gonna wear these big headphones. They're actually like pretty cute. They were really, really cheap, um, but they're not bad. I've got my purse and we're gonna strap up Maggie and let's get out of here. <laughs> oh my God, I spilled. <gasps> no, 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 this is on. I'm so unworthy of nice things. Good girl. You love me even though I'm a mess. Okay, <laughs> I'm still working. Hello. <laughs> I'm still working on this Celsius and you guys can probably tell by the redness of my face that it was really unpleasant out there. It was cold and raining and horrible. <laughs> what are you doing? I feel like this is the longest day ever and I'm like, I've hit a wall. I've, I've just absolutely hit a wall. Anyways, I've made my budget for the month and we have the cash here. Before we stuff, I wanna show you guys 
Remember last reset, I went to the ceramic cafe and I made this pig. Well, I went and picked her up yesterday. I named her Rich Baby Piggy, <laughs> like the Drake song. Um, and she kind of looks like a five-year-old uh, is the one who painted her, like the smile, a little wonky. When they were like curing the, the paint, they must have knocked it on something because I promise you guys, I did not do this. And she literally has a tear. Um, and I posted this on Instagram and a few people replied to my story and were like, it's a happy tear because she's so rich. <laughs> so I'll take it. So she's so cute. And this is where I am now going to store all of my coins. A couple months ago, I bought this coin purse and I honestly love it. However, in, you guys know, I like to carry like tiny purses and it just doesn't fit in the tiny purses. So I will find another use for this cute bag. But in the meantime, I just kind of love the idea of saving up my coins. It reminds me of when I was young because my dad used to give us our allowance and my brother and I each had a piggy bank. I had a pink one and my brother had a blue one and he would give us our allowance and then split it in half and half the allowance would go to the piggy bank, to our savings and the other half would go to our pockets. And the allowance was like our age. So when we were six, we got six, I think it was $6 a month was my allowance. But of that $6, I could only have three of it. It might have been $6 a week, but I highly, highly doubt it. I literally think it was $6 a month and then divided by two. So when I was 12, I had $6 to spend. Anyways, love my dad. He always taught me about saving money. And for many, many years, I didn't listen to him. And now here I am at almost 28 with a hand-painted piggy bank and I'm putting my coins into it. And... You know, something you guys that I'm just, I'm learning is to never, like never turn your nose up at any money. Like someone could be like, why are you keeping those coins? Like who cares? This is gonna add up. And I could end up with $50, $100 in this piggy bank. Never, ever, ever turn your nose up at money. In terms of what's left from last month's cash envelopes, these are all empty except there was $5 left in groceries and some coins and $40 left in Maggie's envelope. I did buy her food actually yesterday before obviously going to the ATM. And so I used from her sinking fund. So I think what I'm going to do is just, I'm gonna count that, um, I'm gonna count it as a February purchase because it like kind of came out of February's budget slash the sinking fund. So we're moving forward with a fresh budget for Maggie, $40 in the sinking fund and all of the rest of the envelopes are empty. So the $5 from groceries and this $5 I found in my fanny pack while traveling, I'm going to start back up my savings envelope in cash. I had it in my other folio that I hadn't looked at for a while because I've kind of been neglecting my cash savings. I've just been taking it and using it to pay off my credit card. I forgot that I didn't know I had money in here. So that's exciting. I do want to get back into the habit of saving my leftover cash because it adds up so quickly and there's so many fun things you can do, things you can buy, funds you can fill just by saving the leftover cash. So even though it's only $10, I am going to add it. Actually, I need this five because I did a $5 in uh, March's budget. For home this month, I'm going to do $100 just because like I've been talking about in this video, there are some changes that need to get done. So I wanna allocate a little bit more money than usual. I'm going to do $25 for coffee. $100 for treat yourself. I was going to do zero, but I just know myself and I know that's not realistic. So. I feel like if I do zero, then it's almost like sky's the limit. So I'll rather just try and contain it to 100. Two, four, six, eight, 100. Two, four, six, eight, 200. And I was gonna do 50. We're gonna do, we're gonna do 240 for Maggie because I don't have any tens. Two, four, six, eight, 100. Two, four, six, eight, 140. And 240 for dining out. Actually, no, it's gonna be 260 because it was supposed to be 50. Maggie was 50, so 60, 40 instead. There we go. Two for $60 for personal care. 
And lastly is groceries for $300. I bought groceries yesterday. I had to do it on credit because I didn't have my cash and I spent a hundred. So it makes for a total grocery budget of $400. So that is my cash budget for the month of March. And that is another check on our to-do list. Now I need to add, take a bubble bath because I'm honestly feeling so overwhelmed and in the spirit of focusing on happiness, I want to do something to like calm me down but I do have some more work to do. So I'm gonna go get back to work. And then if I remember the list correctly, the only two things that will be left tonight is to try a new recipe and to take a bubble bath. So I will see you guys in a little bit. Oh, she's hot. I'm afraid of this pan. 